Hello everybody, it is me, Ashitos Nicolitos, and thank you so much for clicking on my video. So if you are new here, welcome. I'm so glad to have you here today. I talk about the med school life, hair stuff, modeling in New York City, things in between. You know how it goes. If you're not new here, welcome back. You know, I'm always so glad to have you here and to have you back. So thank you for coming back. Today, I want to talk to y'all about reviewing your practice MCATs um, when you are doing that awfully fun stage of your pre-med life doing that MCAT prep. Yeah, so I want to go through the mentality that you should have when you are reviewing your exams. Um, some, I want to walk you through the template that I use to review all of my exams, and then a few tips and tricks along the way. Yeah, so without wasting any more time, let's get started. So just to preface this video, um, I actually got this template from one of my mentors and her name is Sabina and she has a lot of templates on in her Instagram bio which I will link down below where you can find her templates. So she sent this to me when I was struggling with my MCAT prep um, and this was a real game changer for me. And, and I'm, I'm shocked that I didn't have something like this before because y'all know I'm a Virgo. I like to be organized. I like templates and Excel sheets. But yeah, this was another level. Like she, she color coded this and like has a lot of automatic functions here. And that's kind of what you need for something as intense and as involved as the MCAT. So what you see here on the first page, this is somewhere where you can just kind of keep track of your MCAT progress right and in this you could put the date of your exam the resource wherever you got the exam from whether it was a blueprint exam AMC exam which you should save for the later half of like your MCAT prep um, whether it's Kaplan Princeton whatever it is put it down um, your total score what you scored on that exam yeah, um, you can put percentile if you want um, but also your chem phys score cars bio biochem psych social all those section scores and you know just keeping track of what your progress is but where this also becomes really important is when you're getting towards the end of your MCAT prep and this is what I ended up using as well um, because the thing with the MCAT is that you're never going to feel ready to take this exam regardless of how much you study regardless of how you do whatever 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 I don't know anybody who ever feels ready to take this exam so I think that um, something that I had to do was I had to take a look at all of the exams that I took I took like probably eight or nine practice exams before my real thing and I didn't look at the total score like like where I was at the moment um, and what I mean by that was because I got down here and like my total score was like a 495 even though I had like you know 500 here and I had like a 505 here and a 507 here and my scores were all over the place um, but what I did was I looked at the the actual section scores and I saw okay so my highest score in chem phys was on this date where I got a 130 my highest score in cars was a 125 on this date. My highest score in bio biochem was a 126 or 128. And then we can have a psych social over here with 125, right? So it was things like that. I, I highlighted my highest scores in each of these categories. And this kind of showed me my potential. It's just kind of like, okay, you know, anything can happen on any given day, but I know that I can, I have it in me to score this type of a score. So now I just got to make sure that I do whatever I can to get to my optimum, right? And you know how you do that. You eat right, you sleep right, you exercise, you socialize, you do all of the things that you're supposed to be doing. Um, because these scores alone will tell you that that is very much what you're capable of. That and sometimes more if you just really take care of yourself. Yeah, so that's the first page, just kind of keeping track of your progress in that sense. Um, because remember, progress for the MCAT, it is not linear. No, 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 I mean, linear this way. No, 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 no. Um, MCAT progress can be a whole roller coaster. So just be patient with yourself, keep track of your scores, but don't put too much weight on that total score, right? Because on any given day, anything can happen. Great, so then that brings us to our next slide over here. And let's get into how you actually review these, um, these uh, practice tests. So what, what we have here is it's broken up into different sections. Um, and this was my diagnostic exam, so um, the, this one's set up a little bit weird, so let me actually take you to a full-length exam. All right, so it's broken off into the sections, the chem phys, CARS, bio-biochem, psych-soch, 
Um, and what you're going to want to do after you take an exam is you want to go through and fill in all of this. All of these different categories. We want to know the question, whether you got it right or wrong, your thought process. You think that you won't remember your thought process for every question, but as soon as you see that question again, you're going to be like, oh, this is what was going through my mind at that point in time. So you go through that. You write that down. Um, then you write the explanation that they give you, right? and why what you should have been thinking right because a huge part of taking the MCAT is not just getting the content down but learning how to take a test like the MCAT right so right now when you're reviewing this is the sooner that you start the better um, this is a time when you should start getting into that mentality okay the they want me to think like this they want me to think like this and start getting that down here um, yeah so that's what you do in this explanation section over here then you want to say whether you why you got it right or wrong because sometimes it's a lucky guess right and you're going to want to know that for when you're going back to review um because you want it to get to the point that all of your questions you're get, getting them right because they're easy questions right um and these content errors the reason why you miss them as a content area this will change over time and you'll have less and less of these as you keep going through your content review and practicing through exams yeah so then over here in this category where it says strategy this is a good place for you to talk about the strategy that you're going to use to make sure that you don't get this question wrong again. Um, yeah, so the strategy is important whether it's using the process of elimination, common sense, making a note card, studying the content better. You got to really reflect on what you were missing and how you're going to make sure you don't miss that again, right? Um, in terms of the topic to review, um, just what topic the question covers and whether or not this study section over here is whether or not you need to review it. No, if it's an easy question. Yes, if it's something that, oof, I need to work on um, the Doppler effect and math angles, like the sine, cosine, tangent stuff. So that's what you should be filling in for every single question that you go through on these practice exams. Right, so what I did was I spent a few hours, maybe even a whole day, just going through this Excel sheet and filling it out, right? I didn't even study, I didn't even go back and study the content that I needed to. I just went through the worksheet piece by piece. And then once I was finished with this worksheet and I could see the patterns of what I'm getting right, what I'm getting wrong, what needs work, what doesn't need work, I, I then looked at the, all of the topics that I needed to go back and review. And then what I did was I lumped all of the content uh, questions that I got wrong on the Doppler effect together. I lumped all of the um, electromagnetic property questions together. And I studied that using YouTube videos, my books, other people, whatever I could find, right? Just going over those content categories. And then again, I'd go back and try to answer all of those questions again. And if I still didn't understand that, meant I had to go back to the content and review again, right? But the whole point when you're going through these exams, you should be reviewing with the mindset of, and this is where the mindset comes in, you're reviewing every question so that if you get a question wrong on, let's say mechanical energy, right, physics stuff, you get that wrong on your exam, okay, you go back to mechanical energy, you review that topic so much that if any question ever comes up on mechanical energy again, bam, you got it, right? So you're studying to make sure that you don't make any mistakes on any type of related question ever again. That's how you should be reviewing these exams. So some people will be like, oh yeah, I reviewed this exam, it took me two days. And I'm just like, two days? I don't know. Um, are, are, I think that if you're really gonna do a whole practice exam, like a full length MCAT practice exam justice, you need at least four to five days. Right? One day to just go through it and really just knock out all the, the logistics of everything that's going on in your score. Um, and then at least a day for each section to just go through the content categories. And even that's pushing it. It took me, personally, about a week. And if it was a really bad score or, or an a exam where I got a lot of wrong questions, it even took me a little bit more than a week to get through comfortably, right? Because you don't want to rush this. Remember, you're reviewing these questions so that you don't get them wrong again, right? Because the worst thing that you can do is get things wrong on a practice exam and then go through and make the same mistakes on your next practice exam. Then what's the point of you doing these practice exams? You see what I'm saying? Yeah, so just be careful with that and make sure you're doing your due diligence and giving this review portion the respect that it deserves. Yeah, so that's how, that's how I went through um, my practice exams. And the reason why I chose to lump a lot of these questions together is because um, 
It's important to study the content, which is what I do first, but then it's also equally, if not even more important, to see how that content is applied in the context of this MCAT exam, right? Um, because that's what you really need to see. Um, and, and you have to be careful because a lot of times people go through content kind of aimlessly, just kind of like, oh, I'm just gonna study this more and more and more and more and more, when that might not be what you need, right? Because sometimes what you need is, is not what you think you need. That might not make too much sense, but let me unpack that a little bit more. Sometimes you might think, I'm so terrible at answering questions on glycolysis and gluconeogenesis, right? And that's just your mindset because you struggled with that in school. But you gotta look at your exams. If you keep getting those questions correct, you move on. Because even if you don't know every little detail about glycolysis and gluconeogenesis, you know more than enough about how glycolysis and gluconeogenesis is applied on this exam. So move on. Move on to something else where you aced it in class, right? And, and if we're talking about amino acids, like I aced amino acids in class. But if I keep getting amino acid questions wrong on my practice exams, you know, I gotta go back to that content and, and I have to see how it's really applied on these exams because that's probably why I'm getting these questions wrong. All right, so this, this Excel sheet, this method of reviewing, this mindset of reviewing really forces you to reflect a lot on why you're getting these questions wrong and ways that you can prevent yourself from getting questions like this wrong again in the future. Um, so I highly suggest getting yourself a nice template, even if it's not this one, right? I mean, I love this one. But even if it's not this one, get yourself a template that works for you, that keeps you organized, keeps track of your progress, and keeps track of the mistakes so that you're not repeating them in the future. It's like the saying, you know, everybody says if you don't learn from your mistakes, you're doomed to repeat them in the future. That applies to the MCAT as well. Sorry. Um, yeah, so that's what I use to review these exams. The only exam that I did not review in this particular fashion was actually the um, CARS, well not the only exam, the only section that I did not review in this particular fashion was the CARS section. I actually used a different method to review CARS. But for any science-based questions, this works perfectly in my opinion. Um, yeah, but for CARS I used a different worksheet. Maybe I'll make a different video about that entirely later. But to be honest, CARS was not my strongest category, my strongest section. Uh, but I'm gonna still share with y'all what I learned um, and what actually clicked and worked for me. Your goal when you are your goal when you are reviewing these exams is you want to make sure that these, that the majority of these, by the time that you're kind of done with your MCAT um, prep period, these are now more green than anything else, right? Most of the questions you run into, you consider them easy, right? Whether it was just like a reading error, any errors that you're making, like comprehension error, the strategy error, you know? Um, but, it, but it will get better. And, with, and in my opinion, when it comes to actually learning and making progress for your MCAT exam, I don't know, maybe 85, 90% of your progress will be determined by not so much what you put into your content review, but what you put into your practice exam review. Because the MCAT, and, and they've said this before, the MCAT is not really a, a test on, on what you know. It's a test on how well you can learn to take this exam called the MCAT. It is. Um, so definitely just using your practice exams as a guide as to what you need to target more, what you don't need to target anymore, learning the content and also being able to pair that with the application on the exam. That is the key. That is the golden ticket right there. That's what you need to be using. Um, yeah, so that's all I got for you today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. We talked a little bit about the mindset. We talked about the template and the importance of organization and not divorcing the application from your content review. Um, if you have any questions, any comments, any suggestions, you can just comment those down below. And you know I'll love you forever. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, if you haven't liked this video, if you haven't commented, what you waiting for? I'm just kidding. Do that whenever you're ready. But I really do appreciate you for it because as a creator, it helps me out. So thank you. Um, yeah, so I look forward to seeing you next time. Again, thank you for joining me and I'll see you later.